Welcome home. This is Audio EXP for the 1st of October 2022. And the title of this episode is The One. Dapper Rabbit Games are in the spotlight this month, as voted for by patrons. And Dapper Rabbit doesn't yet know they've been voted in, as it's just gone October. I only tallied up the votes this morning. However, I can't hang around as it takes a good while to arrange and complete the Q&A. And I hope to land one with them. So, I better tell them soon. If you are a patron, then you are an awesome person. The contribution you make goes to me paying for art and writing. It goes back into the hobby. It's not spent on tech costs. But I have a plan, which I'll mention later. Also, if you are a patron, you can vote for November Spotlight. You can nominate someone for December too. The five candidates are Terry Miranda, Bandic Camp, Cthulhu Architect, Modern Maps, Watcher DM, and Vivid Worlds. Also in game news, did you know there's a labyrinth version of Cluedo? In the game, you explore the famous labyrinth. Cluedo was called Clue in North America, adapting the name from the British 1950s version. Wikipedia doesn't tell me why, but it does say there were some post-war changes to the game, and in the States, it was marketed as the great new Sherlock Holmes game, well, for a while. And here's another did you know. Did you know that Amazon is changing how ebook refunds work? And it's all because of a stunt on TikTok. The book readers of TikTok, sometimes known as BookTok, challenged each other to speed read the book and return it before the time limit to do so ran out. I see the attraction. Speed reading is a skill I wish I had, and if I could, I'd certainly be reading a lot more. I think also there was a whiff of sticking it to Amazon, that corporate giant in the book talk challenge. Except it wasn't Amazon losing out. It was the authors. And they complained. Amazon's sensible response was to change the refund rules so that you can ask for a refund if you've not read more than 10% of the book. I imagine that some books are still at risk. Recipes and poems, or even random tables for RPGs, might still be plunderable without crossing that 10% mark. Will that happen? I'm not sure. I think people will find a way to exploit things if they want, but I don't think BookTok wants authors to suffer. Now, the title of this podcast isn't 10%, it's The One, and the first one story is coming up. It's another book called One Piece. Now, you may well think of the anime manga One Piece, but this book is one word and the manga too. However, the book really is inspired by the manga. Created by Elin Mantouche, and that's a name I have no idea how to pronounce correctly, this One Piece is the largest book in the world, and it comes in at 21,540 pages long. That's 17 kilograms, and it costs nearly 2,000 euros. Only 50 copies were made, and they've sold out. There's another big The One story, and that is One d d That's in the news this week, with the latest section of the playtest unlocking. But I'm not doing it. I don't have time. Are you? Wizards of the Coast are making good use of their new d d Beyond platform for it. Using that site, notwizards.com, to run and manage files. They're also making plenty of video content to walk people through their thoughts. I think that's a great way to close the gap between the playtest and people, to make it feel more real and personal. When one D&D comes out, many gamers will feel as if they contributed to it, and that's a great community strategy and a marketing one. In routinely itemised this week, I included some one D&D coverage from The Guardian, this wasn't just a D&D is popular now story, which I think we're all used to. It wasn't even a D&D movie is coming story, although it was a bit of that. This article is also about how much financial clout D&D has these days. And I think Hasbro's purchase of the movie company E1 has some shade on it. The lockdown and the terrible impact of movies, of course, is a big factor here. And the D&D movie was Chris Pine though 
I think will be Ewan's first and maybe last big Hasbro challenge. I think it holds its own future in its hands. But the bad, the terrible news from the Guardian article is the discovery that the British idiot minister, Michael Gove, is a gamer. Now, there is another The One, though, and that's The One Ring. That's the official Lord of the Rings RPG. Now in its second edition, also taking pre-orders for the 5e version called The Lord of the Rings Roleplaying. Now, you might think it would sell like hotcakes during Amazon's premiere of The Rings of Power. Well, it can't because it's sold out. I got to speak to Free League boss and co-founder Thomas Harnstam while at Written QA, which is my preference, and he admitted they didn't print enough. I put the pointed question to him because I know British retailers have been telling me the game is hard to get. And it's not just the One Ring though, it's most RPGs. And my sense was that the problem is with the distribution middlemen. But that's not the vibe I got from Thomas, who reassured me that the warehouses have books like Passen. Hmm, I might dig further. It's not all big publishers in the news this week though. Let's quickly talk about Isolation Games, who are kickstarting a printed version of When the Moon Hangs Low. That's a gothic adventure, already a strong selling PDF RPG, and for Geek Native, Rob Lee put together 25 tracks of appropriate background music. So if you're running a spooky Halloween RPG this month, check that post out, as a Spotify playlist is really handy. Now, I did mention something about money and ad tech costs. Geek Native runs a red bubble store. It's not big, I think I can count on my fingers the sales I've managed, but I live in hope. This week, assisted by human artists enabled by AI tools, I launched the Apparatus Cerebrum. That's a six-piece collection of designs across dozens of products. So, if you want a pumpkin assassin on a t-shirt, a sketchy dragon mug, a cute crane monster, a comic strip panel miniskirt, a spooky plant leech mask, or sigils of power on your dog ball, then check it out. Oh, there's Eggbot too. And yes, I did say sigils of power on your dog ball. Well, that's a natural place for them. I've had a typically busy week this week with a trip to Glasgow for a gig, but before I get to the usual outro of freebies and bundles, I want to quickly mention the anime Inuo. I was lucky enough to catch it on the big screen after the Glasgow-based Anime Limited kindly put it there. It's a hard-hitting, stylish anime about forgotten stories and their power, and it's not a Ninja Cat Girl anime. I recommend it if you're a storytelling fan even if you can't usually stand the twang of Biwas. Now, in bundles, there are two from Modiphius on the bundle of folding for the Covius Belly-influenced Infinity RPG. If you're very quick, there's a flash sale for the Cypunk uh, game, which is a, a fudge-powered RPG from Accessible Games. That sale is on at the same time as this weekend's Everyone Games Online Expo. Humble has a book bundle for Tolkien, as books about him and books that inspired him, rather than another copy of Lord of the Rings, which you probably don't need. In freebies, Modiphius has released the eighth Star Trek Adventures brief with Space Rex. We're up to about 100 pages of free content for that series. Pretty impressive. There's also the good looking, but not yet playtested by me, Extinction Punk from Quick Fix Club. That's 117 pages of pay what you want, but tagged with zero bucks recommended price gaming. Now, Extinction Punk is an eco RPG set after an avoidable apocalypse hit the earth. Avoidable apocalypse, you know, like climate change or global war or, you know, turn on the news. And on that cheerful note, I'll wrap there. Keep safe and I'll see you next week.